Work and energy. Work and energy are used to describe how bodies or masses interact with the environment or with other bodies or masses. Conservation of energy, work and power describe the forms of energy and the changes between these forms. Has it ever crossed your mind how rockets fly or how we can power our homes, cars and devices? It all boils down to work and energy. Get ready to blast off into the occasionally fun world of physics, where we'll explore the power of work and energy in our everyday lives. Let's go. Are you tired of the same old workout routine? Do you want to challenge yourself and take your training to the next level? Well, have you ever tried tire training? Tire training is a unique form of exercise that utilizes the principles of work in physics. Work is defined as the force, F, times distance, D. In the case of tire training, the force is the tension between you and the tire, and the distance is the distance you move with the tire. The further you move the tire, the more work you're doing, and the more work you do, the more calories you burn. Also, to calculate the total work being done, you also have to take into account the angle between the force and the direction of motion. The full formula for work is work W equals force F times distance D cosine theta, which is the angle between the force and the direction of motion. The cosine of the angle ensures that we only consider the amount of force that is exactly in the direction of the distance, or more specifically, the displacement. So next time you're feeling like you need to spice up your workout, grab a tire and hit the pavement. Moving on to our next topic, energy. Energy is all around us, powering our world and giving us the ability to do work. From the warmth of the sun to the electricity in our homes, energy is an essential part of our daily lives. It is important to note that the standard unit of measurement in the SI system used for both energy and work is the joule, which is equal to a newton meter. But what exactly is energy? And how does it, um, work? Energy is scalar. It is defined as a physical quantity capable of producing work. When we use energy, it's transformed from one form to another, like how electricity flowing through a light bulb transforms into light and heat. When you eat food, your body converts the chemical energy in the food into mechanical energy, which helps you move and do physical work. And just like how a pogo stick stores energy in its spring, everything around us has energy stored in it waiting to be used. There are two fundamental concepts in physics that explain how energy is stored and transferred in various systems. These are potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy an object possesses due to its position relative to other objects in its surroundings. Roller coasters are all about potential energy. They use potential energy to give passengers the thrill of a lifetime. The formula for potential energy EP is equal to mgh, where m is the mass of the object, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height of the object above a reference point. When a roller coaster car is at the bottom of a hill, it has relatively no potential energy. However, as it climbs up the hill, it gains potential energy. The higher the roller coaster car goes, the more potential energy it has. This potential energy is stored and waiting to be used. When the roller coaster car reaches the top of the hill, it has its maximum potential energy. This is when the roller coaster uses the potential energy to create kinetic energy. The formula for potential energy also depends on the type of potential energy. For example, potential energy in an electric field. Here's a negative charge with its electric field lines. We will examine them more closely in Chapter 9. And here is a positive charge with its electric field lines. At any given moment, the potential energy EP between two electric charges equals K Coulomb's constant, Q1, Q2, which are the magnitudes of the two electric charges divided by R, the distance between the charges. We will examine this equation more closely in Chapter 9, Electrostatics and Electromagnetism. Another type of potential energy, due to the object's position in a gravitational field, is called the gravitational potential energy EP, which equals G, the gravitational constant, M1, M2, which are the two masses involved, 
divided by r the distance between the center of masses of the two masses. Notice the similarity with the equation for electric potential energy. Kinetic energy, on the other hand, is the energy an object possesses due to its motion. Kinetic energy EK is equal to one half the mass M of the object times its velocity V squared. In archery, when the archer pulls back the arrow on the bowstring, the bow is storing potential energy in the form of the elastic potential energy of the bow. The bowstring is also storing potential energy in the form of the elastic potential energy of the string. This potential energy is then converted into kinetic energy when the archer releases the bowstring and the arrow is launched. The arrow also possesses gravitational potential energy as it is affected by the Earth's gravitational force. As the arrow moves through the air, it loses kinetic energy due to air resistance and gravitation. And let's not forget one of the fundamental concepts of physics, the conservation of energy. This principle states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed from one form to another. The conservation of mechanical energy states that the total energy ET equals the sum of the kinetic energy EK and the potential energy EP. Imagine a lowrider bouncing up and down. As it bounces, it gains and loses kinetic energy. At the top of each bounce, my best friend's ride has maximum potential energy at its highest point, but zero kinetic energy because it stops moving for an instant when it changes direction from going up to going down. As it falls, that gravitational potential energy, due to its height h, is converted into the kinetic energy of motion. At the bottom, just before each bounce, this occasionally illegal vehicle has maximum kinetic energy and minimum gravitational potential energy. However, the total amount of energy ET in the system remains constant. And yes, my super keener friends, there is also potential energy stored in the compressed hydraulic system, but that's a story for our next chapter on fluids. Of course, in the real world, where we usually live, the mechanical energy will be lost to friction, heat, as well as sound, so even bouncing tennis balls eventually stop bouncing. Nonetheless, if we take into account all forms of energy in the system, the total remains constant. Let's try a quick practice question to consolidate your understanding of the conservation of energy. Back to the so-called amusement park. Let's pretend that this roller coaster begins at rest from a height h above the lowest point on the track. What is the top speed of the roller coaster at its lowest point near the level of the ground? Consider pausing to determine your response. Without friction, the mass is not needed. Remember how we saw a feather and hammer drop and fall at the same time in the absence of friction in chapter two? Let's solve our roller coaster problem with the conservation of energy. The potential energy at the highest point with no kinetic energy started at rest is equal to the kinetic energy at its lowest point with no potential energy, ground level, so the height h is zero. You should write on your scratch paper or whiteboard that the potential energy at the top is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. Eliminate m from both sides. Multiply through by 2. Take the square root of both sides to isolate v, and so the speed is given by the expression, the square root of the quantity 2gh. During photosynthesis, plants convert light energy into chemical energy in the form of glucose, a sugar. This process involves the conversion of a form of kinetic energy, light, into a form of potential energy, chemical energy. The energy is thus stored in the bonds of the glucose molecule and can be released through cellular respiration. The conservation of energy is demonstrated as the total energy of the system, sunlight, chemical energy, heat, etc., remains constant. Another important concept in physics is conservative forces. A conservative force is a force that does not change the total energy of an object. It only depends on where the object starts and ends, not how it gets there. For example, gravity is a conservative force because it only depends on how high or low an object is, not how it moves up or down. Another example is a spring that pulls or pushes an object back to its original position. 
A spring is a conservative force because it only depends on how far the object stretches or compresses the spring, not how fast or slow it does so. Friction is world famous for being a non-conservative force because it changes the total energy of an object. When an object moves against friction, some of its kinetic energy is converted into heat, which cannot be recovered. Friction also depends on the path taken by the object, not just the initial and final positions. For example, if you push carpets across a table, which is common practice in introductory level physics, the work done by friction will be different if you slide them in a straight line, as opposed to sliding them along a longer path like a curve. And for our last topic, we're going to talk about power. And no, we're not talking about that which corrupts, absolutely. We're talking about one of the most important concepts in science and engineering, the concept of power in physics. So what is power? The power P is equal to the work done W per unit time T. In science, per unit time often refers to rate. Thus, the equation is saying that power is the rate of doing work. Power can also be expressed as the product of a force F on an object and the object's velocity V. Think about power like a sprinter running a race. Just as the sprinter needs to move quickly to cover the distance of the race, a process that requires a lot of power, it means she must expend a lot of energy per unit time. In the SI system of measurement, power is given in watts. One watt is equal to one joule of energy per second. When you turn on a light bulb, it produces light by using electricity. As you know from your experience, the power of a light bulb is measured in watts which tells you how much energy it consumes per second. For example, a 60-watt light bulb uses 60 joules of energy per second. So, next time you turn on a device or use a machine, take a moment to think about the amazing power that's behind it. This helps us make smart choices about how we use energy and resources in our daily lives. Don't forget to consider watching the other Chapter 5 videos and to complete the foundational and then the all-important exam-level practice questions at the end of your master's series chapter. Good luck with your studies.